So Terry McAuliffe is a corporate Democrat. He's really a conservative Democrat. And um, he lost to Republican businessman Glenn Youngkin in a D plus 10 state. Biden won Virginia by 10 points. Should have been a layup election for Democrats in Virginia for the governor's office. And um, he got trounced. McAuliffe got trounced. So, of course, um, when a conservative Democrat loses, whose fault is it? The left. Of course, it's always the fault of the left. That's the way it works in Washington, D.C. That's the way it works. Um, so, now there's a million examples of this happening after the loss. But I just want to show you, they were already starting to build this narrative before we got the results. Before we got the results in Virginia. So in other words, Democrats knew the polling from McAuliffe was bad. And that in the final two weeks, it actually flipped and it looked like uh, Glenn Youngkin had the lead. So they were already laying the groundwork. Here's Democratic Senator, corporatist extraordinaire Mark Warner, making the case that it's the left's fault before any results came in. I, I got to tell you, as somebody who wished we would have gone ahead and voted on the bipartisan infrastructure bill in September, I think we we could have given the president a big win. I got to tell you, in Virginia, where we've got a gubernatorial race tomorrow, that would have really helped uh, Terry McAuliffe a lot if we'd been able to uh, notch that win. So that is a corporatist in no uncertain terms blaming the left because, hey, the left refused to detach the reconciliation bill from the traditional infrastructure bill. And because that's the case, it is therefore the left's fault. Because in his mind, he thinks, what, if the traditional infrastructure bill got passed? And by the way, none of the material benefits of that would have been out the door by the time this election happened. But you think that if that traditional infrastructure bill passed, which is a half measure at best, and I'm being kind by calling it a half measure, it is just about a trillion dollars when we need nearly five trillion just to update our infrastructure up to modern standards. So it's, it's honestly, it's next to nothing on the infrastructure front. And none of the benefits would have gone out the door before the election. But his point is, oh, if we had passed that, then, you know, Terry McAuliffe would probably be winning because President Biden would have notched a W. Okay, but it gets worse. So Axios is out with, um, with a headline today. Voters punish Democrats amid left drift. Voters punish Democrats amid left drift. What left drift? I don't see a left drift. Do you see a left drift? Uh, let's see. Mansion and Cinema are dominating the news, and they've been stripping out almost every popular provision from this Build Back Better bill. Almost every single one. COVID is still, you know, ripping its way through the country, and the last time Democrats materially delivered was the $1,400 stimulus checks a long time ago. Now, by the way, when those stimulus checks were delivered... Biden's approval rating was the highest it has ever been. Because it's almost like when you materially deliver for people, they reward you in the polls and they support you. But Democrats haven't materially delivered. And all that's in the news is, hey, we're dropping paid family leave. Hey, we're dropping uh, a Medicare expansion. Hey, we're dropping free community college. Hey, we're dropping all of these phenomenally popular programs. So on what planet is it leftward drift? Now, I will be maybe overly kind and say this. There is one narrow way in which you could say the left, quote unquote, uh, could be at least partially responsible for the loss here. Unfortunately, there are many like ultra woke leftists who don't know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to elections. And, you know, they sincerely think that the American people are on board with all of their positions on the culture war. And McAuliffe definitely went down that culture war rabbit hole. And when Glenn Youngkin made this race about, about critical race theory, McAuliffe was right there to be like, I agree, let's fight about critical race theory. Let's go right down that culture war rabbit hole. And then he got destroyed in that culture war rabbit hole. He was on the losing side of that culture war battle.
Now, on the one hand, it's because he doesn't know how to argue it. But on the other hand, it's also because, why are you having that argument? Reframe the discussion on economics. Obviously, you should do that. But, you know, Democratic positions on economics are way more popular. And you're going to let him define the debate by going all in on some culture war shit. And you're like, yeah, let's fight it out over the culture war. And then, oh, on top of that, I have one other message. Trump is bad. Wow. Well, he's not even in office. So why the fuck are we talking about this? So in that very narrow sense, because yes, there are many lefties who would say, yeah, follow them down the culture war rabbit hole. No, do not follow them down the culture war rabbit hole. Drop the culture war. Swat that shit aside. Oh, critical race theory? Yeah, he's wrong about critical race theory. Anyway, I'm going to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I'm going to do that. He's not. I'm fighting for working people. He's not. That's what you do. So you could say the left is maybe in part responsible for... Uh, making this idea widespread that we should dive into culture war battles. But in reality, there were no lefties on uh, McAuliffe's staff, and McAuliffe's not a lefty. He decided on his own volition as a centrist to go all in on culture war bullshit. So, even that point, there's only a grain of truth in that. Now, I want to tell you, because again, they're going to try to gaslight the shit out of you. Here's the reality. In the Build Back Better plan, they're blaming the left. The left were the most fervent supporters of these policies that I'm about to list for you. Long-term investments, long-term care investments. So I believe that's elder care. Plus 67 points. The, the approval for that is 79%. Modernizing uh, K-12 school buildings, 73% popular. Electricity grid modernization, 74% popular. Medicare drug price negotiations, 73% popular. Lowering the Medicare age, 59% popular. Universal pre-K, 59%. Tuition-free community college, 58%. Um, extending the child tax benefit. That's plus nine for popularity. Guys, the people who are fighting for these policies that are insanely popular... They're the solution. They're not the problem. The problem is you're stripping these policies out. The problem is the conservative Democrats, the corporate Democrats, the corrupt Democrats. I got more for you. What's the left fighting for? Let's see. Increasing capital gains taxes on the wealthy. That pulls at 72%. Limiting deductions for wealthy business owners, 71%. Raising income taxes on the wealthiest, 2%, 71%. Increasing taxes on large corporations, 65%. The answer is to go left on economics, to go all in on economic populism. That's the answer. The media is telling you, the chatter right now in Washington, D.C. is, no, it's the left's fault that we lost. Joe Biden is president. He's a corporatist. He leans more in a conservative Democrat direction. McAuliffe is a corporatist. He's a conservative Democrat. The guy who's the head of the Democratic Party in the country and the guy who lost this election are corporate Democrats. They're conservative Democrats. And somehow it's the left's fault? How is that the left's fault? They already have their answer before the conversation starts. Because corporate media is complicit in this farce. In this game. By the way, it's not just Axios. It's not just that clip I showed you of Warner beforehand. There was a political reporter who tweeted yesterday, Chatter in D.C. is that Biden has drifted too far left. <laughs> Biden has drifted too far left. He hasn't done Dickie McGee's act since those, that last round of stimulus checks. And he's drifted too far left. They're stripping out all of the left provisions that are super popular, but he's drifted too far left. The heart of the problem is this. The Democrats are putting their comical corruption on display for the world to see right now. They're broadcasting to the world that they take legalized bribes. Manchin is representing the oil industry. Kirsten Cinema is representing Big Pharma. They are broadcasting that to the world by stripping out popular provision after popular provision after popular provision. So the Democratic Party has a stench on it that they can't get off. Now, it's, that's not to say Republicans aren't corrupt. They are phenomenally corrupt. 
but they're smart enough to not dive into that conversation. They just change the topic. They just go, all right, push that aside. Why do you think when we had the last uh, debate over, I think it was the stimulus checks, you turn on Fox News and they're talking about Dr. Seuss. And they're saying, the woke mob is trying to get rid of Dr. Seuss, crazy. They just changed the conversation. So Glenn Youngkin, who won't lift a finger to help working people and regular Americans, his argument is, hey, uh, Terry McAuliffe is uh, pushing this critical race theory nonsense, which is sectarianism, which is racist, which is anti-white, and this stuff is crazy. Man, they should stop doing this. So he just changed the conversation to some culture war bullshit, and Terry McAuliffe was like, yeah, let's fight about this. Why? Why would you fight about that? And why would your message be Trump bad when Trump's not even in office anymore? Woo, buckle up, baby. The midterms are going to be a bloodbath, son. The fact of the matter is this. The only way out for Democrats, and even this is a Hail Mary, pass the full $3.5 trillion bill with all of the popular provisions, on top of that, do another round of stimulus checks, or eliminate all student loan debt through executive order, which Biden has the authority to do, but he just doesn't want to do, or legalize marijuana, or a mix of those things, or all of those things, and then even then, you have to brag about your accomplishments from right now until the election. And even then, you might still lose because you didn't do any voting rights reform or gerrymandering reform. So now Republicans have like a plus six point advantage no matter what. So even if you do all those popular things and you brag about those popular things and you move the needle in your direction, which you would if you did those things, you might only pick up, you know, five more points. And you pick up five more points. Well, guess what? If you need six a six-point advantage just to hold on to the numbers you have, you're still going to lose seats. The Democrats are pathetic and ineffectual, and FDR's rolling over in his grave right now. He is. He's rolling over in his grave. <sighs> Unbelievable. Somehow it's the left's fault. Somehow it's the left's fault. Again, the only tiny grain of truth in it is there are many ultra-woke left-wing idiots who will say, yeah, let's fight the culture war all day. Don't listen to them. They're wrong. But don't get it twisted. It is not the left's fault by and large. You know whose fault it is? Corporate Democrats. Conservative Democrats. It's the fault of the openly and brazenly corrupt. It's the fault of the people who have not delivered on their promises. That's whose fault it is. Maybe the problem is that Joe Biden said you were going to get $2,000 checks, and you didn't. Said you were going to get a public option, and you didn't. Said you were going to get a $15 minimum wage, and you didn't. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe when you mix not delivering on policy with somebody with the personality of a bowl of oatmeal and going all in on culture war grievance playing defense, maybe you look like a total loser in that situation because you are. Beating a Republican should be the easiest thing on the planet, and they can't do it because they're offering nothing. If the Republican argument is, I want to do bad things, the Democratic response is, and I want to do nothing. I believe in nothing. Well, turns out a compelling voice for doing bad things can beat somebody who believes in nothing from time to time. And that should not surprise you. What Glenn Youngkin did is he walked that fine line with Trump's base and didn't get too crazy, but didn't denounce them. So the base came out for him, and he picked off those suburban voters by just having a conversation about what he thought he could hammer McAuliffe on, which is critical race theory. That's it. That's all he had to do. And the Democrats were so pathetic and ineffectual, he couldn't, he couldn't win. He couldn't beat that. Now, I dare you to imagine a separate timeline where the $3.5 trillion uh, package already passed, where a $15 minimum wage already passed, where a public option already passed, where Biden delivered materially for the American people and they're seeing the effects of it. And I dare you to imagine a world where Terry McAuliffe's response and his campaign was not Trump bad and yes, let's fight about critical race theory all day, where Terry McAuliffe's response was, critical race theory, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to get you a higher minimum wage or I, I'm going to support the PRO Act or I am going to get rid of right to work. He supported so-called right to work, which is right to work for less. It's anti-worker garbage. It's anti-union garbage. What if he had a purely economic message? I'm going to improve the lives of Virginians. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise your wages. I'm going to, I'm going to 
tangibly, materially, economically improve your life and your well-being. I'm going to update our infrastructure, and I'm a fighter for the people. What if his message was tangible, it was on economic policy, it was about improving lives, and every time Glenn Youngkin uttered some culture war bullshit, he swatted it aside and moved on to the issues that the American people care more about. In that timeline, where Biden did some real shit, and Terry McAuliffe ran on some real shit, in a Democrat plus 10 state, the Democrat would have won. Don't let them tell you anything different. The fact of the matter is, here, I have some facts about Terry McAuliffe for you. He was co-chairman of President Bill Clinton's 1996 re-election campaign. He was chairman of the Democratic National Committee from 2001 to 2005. And he was chairman of Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign. He opposed repealing right to work when he was governor. And uh, he also made a big deal of a Bill Crystal endorsement. This is the person who lost. Not some swashbuckling populist leftist who was trying to improve people's lives. So don't let the media gaslight you. Don't let them gaslight you. <sighs> and we know it's going to be the dominant narrative. We know the left is going to be blamed and that's the dominant narrative. And um, if that convinces Biden to get even more conservative, if that convinces the Democrats to be even more conservative, we might see a bloodbath the likes of which we've never seen in U.S. history in these midterms. So buckle up.